Hello, and welcome to the Nerds at Large spoiler cast for Red Dead Redemption 2. I am one of your hosts, Darby Hellman. I am Jeff Mayo. And Jeff, this is our first thing we're recording on our new recording equipment. Indeed, indeed. Our and fancy new toys. Very fancy new toys. If you're uh, watching this on video, you can look at them. It's very, very impressive. I feel very professional. <laughs> yeah, so let Jeff demonstrate. <laughs> I don't know, I'm very excited about these things. So, yeah, all of our podcasts and stuff should sound a lot better in the future. Until we get four people. Yes, then it'll be like the good old days. It'll be nostalgia at that point, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, we do have three mics, so any three-person thing will still will be good for this type of thing. But four-person, at least right now, will be going back to the Blue Yeti. And please bear with us because we're learning. We're learning how to operate this stuff, so... Well, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll have to see how This will be nice to have during the Game Awards slash yes. Smash stuff. Yes, it'll be very nice. But Smash. Smash. So ready for Smash. But here today, we are talking about Red Dead Redemption 2. And if you have not watched one of our spoiler casts before, we're going to start with the brief spoiler-free uh, period. And uh, if you want like our more like, full, in-depth, spoiler-free talk like for a long time, you can listen to the last few episodes of our podcast because... We went into it just as we were playing it. But we're going to go a little bit through that here, and then we'll make it very, very clear when we're going into the actual spoilers. Indeed. Yes. So, but just generally talking about Red Dead Redemption 2, me and you both beat the main story and the epilogue, and I'm sure yes. we both did a good amount of side stuff. Indeed. That's, we did it in a pretty timely manner. I didn't expect us to both get done this quickly. I, did, I really <laughs> did not either. And, and it's like right over, we got done right under a month. <laughs> and I don't really feel like I rushed. No. Like, I feel like I took my time. I think I just played that much, like, yeah. during, like, every single night. Um, and uh, so I'm very interested to talk to you because you didn't play Red Dead Redemption 1. You didn't plan to play this game, but it was just kind of like the hype and everyone else playing and game awards. Yeah, and if, I kn if I knew I was going to play, I probably would have tried to get in one. But, mm. so, I'm coming in from, I have no idea how... What happens to any of these Which characters? Which is kind of interesting. It's kind of an interesting way to like. Honestly, I kind of like the. I kind of liked. I did this way. Obviously, you know, make going back to Red Dead One probably harder in ways. But from a yeah, from, from a story perspective, it's like I had no idea what's happened with any of these ones. As far as I know, almost everyone here could die. In ways, I think it actually it could actually help you with Red Dead yeah. One. Like it'll hurt as far as the like going back to play a game from two. Oh, yeah, that's that's yeah gameplay about. wise, yeah. but story wise. There's certain things that I've heard people talk about with, like, they had not played Red Dead 1, and I kind of envied them, because there were certain things I knew that kind of, like, took away some of the suspense for certain parts of the game, whereas yeah. other people were like, you know, they had no clue what was going to happen. So yeah. I'm interested to talk to you about that kind of th stuff, too. And, like, I talked to you, you were obviously enjoying the game through the main story, or, like, you know, through the middle of the story, but I haven't really talked to you about, like, towards the end, and I know that... From you've at least hinted that that's where it, like it really started to click. Yeah, well, I mean, so, like, it clicked the whole time. But, yeah. yeah, or like you know, like at least I think you enjoyed it just as much as me. Yeah. So like, what what about Red Dead Redemption Two like really hooked you in this way that you didn't think? Um, so? Obviously, story was a um, you know just a big thing. Um, getting to know all the characters in the camp, seeing what you know they were going through, seeing the development, you know some some very subtle just throughout the story and you know especially you know even with Arthur and stuff and just how the whole camp was kind of changing right. based on how the overall story was going and obviously going out in the world and just seeing how immersive it is and just you know going around talking to all the townspeople and the random strangers and all that kind of stuff throughout yeah I love the way that this world just I mean like a lot of games do this but I feel like none do it as well as this, where the world just changes as you change. And, like, there's some things, like, there's some mechanics in the game where it's, like, it's really fun at first. Like, the, the you know, the base mechanic and some of the, like, conversations you're having with people. And then gradually, as the game goes on and, like, trials and tribulations happen and stuff, those things become, like, part of the story. And they become, like, you were having fun doing this. And then it's like, oh, this is tense now. Yeah, it's like I, I used to walk in the camp and everyone was partying. I can play dominoes with these people, do all this, and I walk in now and it's just like, ooh, yeah, this is just a hostile environment, and that's really cool. Yeah, that's really cool how those things change over the story, and I think that was definitely my favorite, like one of my favorite parts of it. And also, just I went into Red Dead Redemption two kind of 
just going off of the trailers and just the little bits we saw, I thought that very little, <laughs> very little, yeah. And that's kind of why I didn't have much to go off of. But I kind of thought that Arthur Morgan just kind of seemed like generic cowboy number two. Yeah, I obviously it worked out for Rockstar. I know you can. Say, I mean, yes, Rockstar can do what Rockstar wants, but I'm still going to say that I don't think their marketing campaign was overall the best as far as getting people kind of hooked in. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and as we saw, like, yeah, they didn't necessarily need all need all that, but that doesn't mean that it yeah. wouldn't have helped. I mean, it doesn't like, mean like that you it was, said, yeah. it sounded like our, it, the marketing made it seem like Arthur was a nothing character by playing the game. You know, that's not true at all. Playing the game, he's probably one of my favorite video game characters yeah. ever, which I Indeed. did not see coming. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm glad you agree. And yeah, I mean, like, maybe that is a fault of marketing that, like. I had absolutely no clue that that character was going to be that good. Like, I was excited for the world, but then when you get in there and seeing, like, Arthur is, like, very much the anti-hero, but not in the, like, cliche, just kind of, like, crappy way you've seen yeah. so many times. I feel like he he is just such a conflicted character who does awful things, but then is also just, I don't know. Just yeah. <laughs> when you get to the end, I have felt for him so much. In so many different ways. And it's not just him. Every single member of that gang, like, you felt like you spent real time with them. Mm -hmm. there, I really don't think there was a throwaway one. There was obviously some that were more important than others. Yeah. I thought there was some I didn't spend enough time with, but that's probably me just not hanging around and may not just activating certain missions. Yeah, and some of them were in more subtle ways. Yeah. That you just... Like, they weren't involved with actual big story events going on, but after the big story event would happen, you would walk in the camp and they would be distraught over something. Yeah. And they would, you know, you would have this, like, very emotional conversation with them about the big things mm -hmm. that were going on. And that was enough for me for yeah. some of those, like, minor characters. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the other, the other big thing, I before we get into, like, spoiler talk and everything, uh, people talk a lot about the, the gameplay with it. I do like I for the most part I enjoyed I, I enjoyed every aspect of Red Dead and especially just wandering the open world there was constantly new things to see mm -hmm. new things going on beautiful just yeah. stunningly beautiful game um, I do think the combat after a while especially towards the end got repetitive for me it, it was never like there was always so much else going on yeah. that it hasn't bothered me as much as other people but it does like Around the end, I was very interested in the story, but I kind of knew that every mission was going to be like, okay, we're going to run in here. There's going to be a group of people that aim, shoot, aim, shoot, aim, shoot, walk to the next place, aim, shoot, aim, shoot, aim, shoot. And that did get old after a while, but it never detracted from me. Mm. I thought it was spread out enough, I guess, that, though that partly depends on how you play in the pay your own pace. This is true. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Because, yeah. But there's just... Oh, and I guess just the immersion. Did that ever the because this game is very heavy on the kind of survival, but also just immersion in the gameplay mechanics. Like when you walk into town, and you if you've been out in the wilderness for a long time, and you walk into town, you actually look dirty and ragged, yeah. and your like clothes are all like torn up and everything. And people will comment on it, and you can go take a bath or change clothes mm -hmm. and get some food, or yeah. you'll get you know a week and stuff. Um, I haven't talked to you since like earlier in the game. Did you enjoy that the whole way through? Yeah, yeah. I took constant baths. So I didn't hear much about the. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I tried every once in a while to do it. <laughs> there was like I did. I stopped hearing about it like afterwards because I started doing it very often. But there, I remember like walking in or waking up in camp and I walked by Dutch's tent or something and I was like, "Good morning, Dutch," and he's like. Arthur, take a bath. Have some respect. <laughs> I never got that far. Luckily. Nor like Titan of Arthur. Okay, this seems like a, a story mission where it'd be good if Arthur was a little clean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that that kind of thing, like, <laughs> it was so funny. Like, I think I thought about it on our podcast that there was one part where I was riding my horse and I was, like, running from some bandits or something. And I, like, my horse tripped over a rock and I fell into some mud and he, like, spit like slammed into the mud on his right side and I got back up, got on my horse and kept going. Yeah. And then I got to the cut scene and Arthur is just like splattered with mud <laughs> all on the right side of his face and his clothes. It's just so funny to see him talking to everyone. There's just like mud <laughs> <laughs> caked on him. It's pretty great. Yep. Um, and just, I don't know, the story the whole way through, I thought it was great. Mm -hmm. I think this is a special game. I agree. 
It's a truly special game. And I hope that enough people get through it because it's long. But I don't know about you. I struggle to say it's too long, though, because I kind of feel like you need everything that happened in that game. It's like it's almost more akin to reading a book to me than it is watching a movie or a TV show or game or something mm-hmm. like that. Just the way that like when I think back on things that happened in like Act One, that feels like forever ago in a good way. Like it yeah. feels like you've been with these characters. Yeah, and if you know you're where you're like, yeah, it might get too long. I think mean, you could just um, crit path it. You could. I, I feel like it loses. It would lose something. Yeah. At that point, if you did just go main story, main path, I mean, I think it'd still be a great game, Mm -hmm. but it's something I just think people should take their time with, but beat it. Indeed. I think definitely finish it. Indeed. Indeed. Like it's a hard game. (laughs) No, no, that's like, that's the other part of it. It's not a game you're going to be bad at. It's just, it's kind of, I mean, it's, it's like part walking sim, part action game, part, it's a lot of things. Indeed. There's a lot of things going on. All right, Jeffrey. Are you ready to get into dim spoilers? Let's get into them spoilers. All right, so after this point, make sure you have beaten the main story and the epilogue. Yes. Because we will be spoiling both of them in full detail. So go away. Go away now. This is your final one. Be gone. <laughs> Shoo, get out. Get out. Yes, yeah, so screw Micah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Micah, man. So satisfying at the end. Oh, my God. It was just... And I, I honestly didn't completely expect us to make like a, as the epilogue was going on. I kind of like started to figure out, okay, we're probably gonna have some final showdown with Micah. But at least at the end of Arthur's story, I kind of thought that Micah was just gonna be a thread that dropped. You know, um, I mean, as someone again, this is gonna come up a lot. As someone who did not play Red Dead One, I figured it was a case of. Okay, either you take a, take him out of the epilogue, or he's a character in the first game. Yeah, well, he's clearly not a character in the first game. No. <laughs> he's coming back in the zombie DLC, Darby. He might. Like, that would be really cool if you went back in Red Dead 1, and he was actually like one of the zombies in the Nightmare this whole yeah. time, and we didn't know. Oh, uh, yeah. Speaking <laughs> of that, um, I now ha- have the Xbox 66, Xbox One version of Red Dead 1. Oh, okay. You, so, with the game of the year edition, so I get all the DLC. Okay. Like, you bought the... The 360 thing, and you can yeah, it, do the it's, backwards compatibility. It's also packaged of on the top of the box Xbox 360 and Xbox One is backwards compatibility. Ah, okay. So, yeah, it's, it's gonna be weird, you know, playing on a different controller, but I'd rather play. Oh, on. do you actually have to? Or, okay, no, you can play with the Xbox One controller, right? No, I mean, I'll be playing on my yeah. Xbox One, yeah. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I, I thought you meant like you had to bust out a 360. I was like, wait, what? No, no, yeah. that's exactly why I got on the X, that, yeah. that version because I don't want to bust out my PS3. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, no, that would that would be cool. I'm 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 kind of excited to like maybe see that. In like beating this game made me want to open up Red Dead One because like this game really does almost it almost feels like you're about to just start playing Red Dead One at the mm-hmm. end of this, especially because they yeah. rem- they remade the entire flipping map. <laughs> Like, I don't know if you've gone the whole way southwest. I haven't done that much. Well, stuff, like spoilers, kinda... the entire Red Dead 1 yeah, map <laughs> is remade in this. And I imagine a lot of that's going to be used online, so it's not like they made it for nothing. But it was, yeah. this map was already huge. It was already gigantic. I and mean, the whole main story took place here. And then there's an entire another map that's almost like about half the size to the west, which is crazy to me. Yep. <laughs> and you can go back to, like, all the different towns from Red Dead 1. It's nice. really wild. Like... There's one town that's like a ghost town, basically, in Red Dead 1 that everyone's been abandoned. It's uh, just like this empty town. Let in. Yeah. Nice. You go there and there's people there if you play Nice, now. nice. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, obviously, I wouldn't know about this, but apparent as much, but I've, you know, rather people, just, you know, their post-credit scenes or during the credit scenes or whatever, and apparently Agent Ross and someone else walking up to the, the farm at the end, and that's the beginning of Red Dead 1. Yeah. And you don't know... You don't really know like the premise of Red Dead One, right? Nope. Yeah. I, the only things I know is obviously the Marsons are in it. Mm-hmm. Um, Dutch is in it at some point, right? And uh, well, I'm I don't care about swirling the. End, no, I mean, end I'm of Red I'm Dead going to be talking about the end of Red Dead One in in John big Marshall terms. Is the yeah. only thing I know. <laughs> right, right, right. Those are the only things I know. I don't know any other characters from two that's in one. But part of me feels like um, Sadie 
might be involved because I feel like they pushed mm-hmm. her a good bit. I, the only the only thing I'm going to talk about is John Marston dying. I'm going to leave. I, I think I can leave the rest of it. And I don't really need to talk about it. Yeah. So that's the only. No, thing. I, also, gonna, I do not know how he dies. I just know he dies. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm, that's probably as far as I'll go with it anyway. Um, but let's talk about Red Dead Redemption 2. Okay. And like I said, I feel like this game, like I understand that this pace won't be for everyone. And there are, th- but at the same time, I feel like this game needs to be paced the way it is. Because for like the first, like a lo- long time in this game, you are this like, you know, Arthur Morgan, he's always kind of conflicted. He's never completely just a ruthless outlaw. Mm-hmm. He always has kind of a softer side to him, yep. like and, deep, deep down. And they always say, like, oh, the you know, the crew has a code or whatever that, you know, we don't kill, and you know, innocents and that kind of thing. And right. mainly and, steal from the rich, even though you can kind of do the opposite <laughs> if you so. <laughs> yeah, kind of on your own time, you can go be a bad person, which both me and Jeff played. Um, good. We good boys. We good boys. Relatively. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it just, I thought you you kind of need those early stages where it's like the gang is the gang and you're kind of like, you are doing this kind of like selfish, but like you said, you have a code and it's kind of back and forth, but you're doing bad things mm-hmm. a lot. And like Arthur, like Arthur kind of has, the whole gang has this. We're here for us. We don't really care about anyone else. We'll steal or rob. We'll do all these things. And it's working. You know, like, obviously you're coming down off of whatever happened at Blackwater, which I kind of like that you never completely know. Yeah. yeah. I kind of like that that's just left, like, we just don't talk about that. And obviously that's kind of the first strike to the gang falling apart. And then it like, goes mm-hmm. from there. But back in those early days, they are the gang. Like, you are doing these horrible things. You are making money. You're doing this. And you need those elements to for the payoff later when it starts to fall apart to really like hit home i agree and i think it would have been weaker if that was just like a six hour chunk instead of a 30 hour chunk because you think back on all the different memories even like even the braithwaite manor stuff that feels like so long ago yeah <laughs> <laughs> was that kind of i'm trying to, yeah wasn't that kind of start the start of the dutch decline i think so pretty much pretty much because it was I'm trying to think exactly what happened. I mean, that was even in Rhodes before then. It started to be like well, that is Rhodes. I, I know, but like yeah, yeah. the things that happened yeah, before yeah. then yeah, yeah. started to like Dutch started to become more like yeah, yeah. I was talking more like yeah, story in general. Yeah. Right, right. But even that, like, I mean, we're gonna be jumping around here a lot. But that moment, like when it's like they took Jack, and then the gang's like, oh hell no, nope. Like you, like you're not gonna take. <laughs> Like one of our our people's a, a boy, a like eight year old boy, and he's one. You're not of gonna ours. take like the only pure thing we have. <laughs> and like in that when the they all walk up and that like weird choir music's playing, but it works so well yeah. somehow. And then it's just like John is like furious, and Dutch is like, "I need you to calm down. We're we're gonna yeah, do this." Yeah, I like how that's like the I think the first time maybe except for maybe something in the beginning where where like everyone who's able's like. Okay, we are going. Yeah, Everyone. We are doing this. <laughs> and like, there's a lot of people like sometimes like, oh, we don't. I don't want to go. I don't want to do this. And that was like, no, <laughs> like, no, we are all going. <laughs> and like, you could feel they were pissed off. Yep. <laughs> and like that was, I feel like that was one. This game does a lot of kind of like being a comment against the Western type of like storytelling and just violence in general. Even though it's a super violent game, it's kind of like commenting against the violence a lot of times mm-hmm. but i feel like that was one of the few times where it's like no take glory in this yeah because you need to see the gang at its highest mm-hmm. and where it's like you don't mess with our own we're coming for you Indeed. and like i i just i watched that scene again like recently and i got chills and when he just runs out there he's like you inbred trash we're coming we're coming <laughs> for our boy it's like oh my god it's crazy <laughs> and violent very very violent when they Indeed, drag very, the lady out there it's yeah Ish, but set everything on fire. Set it, it all on fire, and like, yeah, that was that was wild. And then that also makes it so much sadder when you get to the end, and Dutch is like, "Oh, Mike is like, oh, it's just it's just a girl, or it's just Abigail, it's just a girl and boy, whatever." Like yeah. we don't need. And he's like, "He's right, we don't need it." And it's like, oh, right, oh yeah. You just see the fall, like the juxtaposition between like when Jack was taken earlier in the story and dutch is like i will 
move heaven and earth to get this boy back. Mm-hmm. And then later on at the end, when he's he like, just, eh. he just drops them like yeah. they were nothing. And he started doing that everyone. It's like, the more you see him power with Micah, you're like, no touch, no, why are you doing this? Micah sucks. But it makes sense because the entire game, Dutch values loyalty above anything else. Mm. And like, I mean, I've said this before in the podcast, I honestly think Dutch might be my, my, the most interesting character I've seen in the video game. He's just such a fascinating character because he is simultaneously, in a lot of ways, he's a very good leader. Like, he is very, very good at... Very charismatic, getting yeah. people to do what he wants. <laughs> yeah, and to get people to band together on this, like, family code mm-hmm. in this way. Like, very cultish, but he, he is... Yeah, you know, like, again, this is to show the, how things kind of change. You go from, um, I'm forgetting the name of the camp. The one that's, uh, I think, around Rose Roads. Shady Bell? The no, plantation no. thing you're talking about? Oh, the the second one, yeah, like by the water, one. yeah, yeah, and yeah, when yeah. um, uh, Milton or you know the yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. detective dude, you're talking whatever. about when you take Jack fishing or something, he walks up. Oh no, 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 like I think no, that when was he goes on. there later. I'll stop interrupting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When he when he comes um later and confronts Dutch in the camp and everyone kind of stands by them, he's it's like you know you you know if you guys want to bring him in blah 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 and everyone kind of stands firm and then mm-hmm. you later and then everyone just starts leaving one by one by one and it's brutal and even like um angelo bronte when he's like a thousand dollars to whoever yeah. shoots dutch right now and they're all just there and it's like nope, we're... nope and that's what that's the type of like confidence and just loyalty that dutch inspires and early in the game it's like yeah you like feel that you kind of like can get a sense that dutch is a little narcissistic and a little, like I said, cult leader-ish. But it is exciting, and you kind of like believe him when he's like, we're going to be okay, we just need money, we just need this, whatever. And it sounds inspiring, and everyone else believes him at the beginning, everyone's pumped for it. And then he just, towards the end, he's saying the same things. He's like, oh, we just need one more job, just yep, some money. And you just don't believe him anymore. Yep. You've just heard the same thing. Again, makes me excited to play Red Dead One just to kind of see like where he, you know, where we saw him at the end, where he, you know, shot Mike and see, you know, yeah, that story. To see where that goes. Yeah, I'm excited for. I want you to see that, see that too, and I want to replay it too because it's been a very, very. Maybe do a kind of replay together thing. That'd be cool. That'd be really fun. Yeah, and like I said, I think if you mainline it, it wouldn't be that long. Yeah, you probably want to do some side things, but maybe just not as much as Red Dead Two, unless you're just really enjoying. Yep. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, sorry, what the last thing I'll probably say about Red Dead One. I saw in the box thing is like it has the different things for DLC characters. I feel like one of them was Dutch, so it's one of the DLC Dutch focused. I don't know if I even played all the okay. DLC. Okay, well we can drop that in. I mean, I know Dutch and all of them were like characters in the um, online thing. I know that much at least. Okay. Like, I think yeah. Okay, well back I, to two. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I don't remember a lot of that stuff. Uh. What was it? I mean, we were just talking about Dutch in general. Mm-hmm. I was going somewhere, but it's fine. We'll get back to it. It's just, I mean, I just, I mean, a big part of like, there's so many parts of this, but a, a big part of this game was Dutch's transformation. And I just feel like because you saw him from every stage going along, it just made so much sense. And uh, I was talking about Mike. I was saying because the entire time Dutch, right. like, pri- like, takes pride and loyalty and like that's what Micah was loyal. Micah, or at least like made himself seem loyal. Mm-hmm. And it, when Dutch was starting to like lose grips on everything, and it was partially because these this entire story, this gang was never destined to be successful because time is moving. No, away they keep on breaking. It's like times have changed. Blah 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 blah. You're right, and that's. It really wasn't necessarily anything Dutch was doing wrong that was leading them down the wrong path. It was just that what they were doing in general was wrong. It, it yeah. was like against what society is going towards. This, I kind of love that it's a Western where you keep going east. Mm-hmm. And it's really interesting. It's like, because it, do, it almost doesn't even make sense when you're looking at it. It's like you're this guy armed to the teeth with a cowboy hat and a um, horse in Louisiana, basically, in New Orleans. Yeah. And it doesn't make sense because you shouldn't be there. You should not be shooting people. You should not be this crazy, violent outlaw in the middle of a civilized town. 
And that's kind of part of the game mm -hmm. that I love. I love about that. And that just makes, like, Dutch's transformation was just so amazing to me. Mm -hmm. I thought so. And his voice actor is just really, really... Really Indeed. Good. So, question. Um, yep. Okay, one more final thing for Red Dead One. Are Duchess and John's voice actors the same? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yep. yep. Good. Good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that that was that would have sucked, especially for spending that much time with them. It would have been weird if they were different. Yeah, yeah. I kind of expected, but you know, just didn't know for sure. Oh, and even when I I played a little bit of Red Dead One before Red Dead Two, and Red Dead One came out in like oh seven or oh eight or something. I think it was. No, I think it was later. I think it was like two thousand ten. Really? I think they were like eight years old. Uh, yeah, yeah okay yeah yeah i think you're right i think you're right that's still a while ago but yeah, yeah. i think you're right i remember like i mean even just playing that a little bit before red dead 2 i was struck with i was like dang jack's voice actor is really good <laughs> like for especially for the time of that game and everything mm -hmm. it was like yeah it's super 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 good um i just kind of want to talk about i'm ju jumping around to like favorite moments and if you have any too i think my single favorite quest line was the just the entire thing of the um when he gets tuberculosis but like the the guy he was punching the debt collector uh, whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. that first one that you have to uh, do downs. that was part of it yeah downs um just because you go on that first mission and it's brutal it's like you don't want to be doing this yep and as we've mentioned um that i think in our past can yeah you look at the journal and yeah um, he's Arthur pretty says like I hate doing this blah 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 right yep. and it and it's interesting because the complete opposite of what you see on the screen you see him screaming at him like mm -hmm. calling them awful things punching the guy killing the guy like and, and doing all of this and you would think like God this guy's horrible and then you read yeah you read his actual thoughts and you you feel like you kind of are getting the real Arthur when mm -hmm. he's like yeah I really don't want to do this and I did wait did you play that whole thing? The all, the side other, yeah, all the other side missions. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Just, just making sure. As far as I know, I did. <laughs> just making sure, because that's where I was going with... No, no, the moment I saw you be stuck, I was like, that, we're doing that. <laughs> yep. And that was the most impactful, like, just series of missions in the whole game to it, me. It's one of those, like, side story things where it's like, it feels like it should be a regular, like, main story. It's it feels kinda, like it's essential. It's kind of wild that, yeah, you cannot play that if you don't yeah. want to, which is... Because it seems so important. And I think when I talked about it in the podcast, when I said I got to a milestone where Red Dead made me cry, it was that. Yeah. When you get to the end and he's just like, you don't, I don't want you to forgive me. Take this money. Don't think about it or whatever. He said, don't thank me. Go. And he, mm -hmm. and he thanks him. He said, I, don't, I said, don't thank me. I don't deserve this. Mm -hmm. And even like she was, she'll take the advice or whatever. But she said, I mean, she gave him the advice of that you need to just make something of your life. You, you said you'll never make amends for what you did. That's not some. That's not something that's on the table. But you can like do good for the time left, or you can hang yourself for all I care. Because like she shouldn't forgive him. Yeah, he killed her husband. It, like that's not on the table. But I just Arthur's just desperate need to do something good in his life as he's dying. Mm -hmm. It was just. God, it's, it was like very, very, very powerful. Yeah, I was wondering if they were going to come up because I think it was when you, I assumed you did the Mary Linton. Mm -hmm. what, yes. Um, yeah, she cut, shows up in one of those, I think, randomly. She Oh, Downs. Yeah. Does, yeah. Does Downs. Yeah, yeah. I think she does. And she also showed up in, um, she showed up in another one in Saint Denis with. Um, I, might be, I think that's what I'm thinking of. I might be getting the class I don't think it up. The one that the one that I'm thinking of was not a Mary Linton quest. Yeah, okay, actually, um, I don't. I don't think I remember her in a Mary Linton quest. But maybe maybe I'm just forgetting. But like, she was. I was doing another quest for like the priest people in Saint Denis, mm. and like I was just on an errand for one of the priest, the like, uh, whatever nun yeah, in yeah. Saint Denis, and like I rounded the corner and she was there like. She was a prostitute, and mm -hmm. she saw you, and immediately yeah, I saw it. So she like, she like it. screamed and said like This man just assaulted me and ran away, and then the cops came after me." Yeah, yeah, yeah. May, may, may I just getting them mixed up? Yeah, and maybe she shows up in different things, but no, no, I, I did that. I might just remember yeah, yeah. what quest it was wrong. Oh yeah, I also like speaking of the nun. It's just the cool thing. You do that quest, and she comes up in a story. 
yeah cutscene later i'm like so if i didn't do that this wouldn't this it, the little conversation, the, the whole conversation would not, wouldn't have happened, or it'd be really weird. <laughs> and, and it makes me wonder what else could there have been? Like, what yeah. else did I just do in the wrong order? If I did it in some other order, I would have had like some random person come up. Yep. But I like that. That's just very organic to it. And when we talk about my favorite moments, that conversation was another one of my favorite yep. moments. <laughs> that was another one that made me tear up. Like mm-hmm. the, both of those. I, there's probably more moments, but both of those definitely. Yeah. Though that it's the main realize I think I missed out on the whole priest slash nun side quest line because like, there was another one that showed up i didn't do it and then that happened so i don't think i've seen it show up again so that sucks yeah i might have missed some things too yeah because yeah oh. i guess i guess just after that point I, i'm guessing that's all cut and yeah dead. she's in mexico yeah i might have I, I might have finished it off like i did a lot of them for her but i'm yeah. not sure there, there might have been more but just something like I like that this game kind of has the balls to be like, no, there's certain things that you're not going to be able to get on this playthrough because it just progresses in the normal time. And yep. you do certain things, and certain things are logged off, and that's just your playthrough. And I, I kind of like that, that they don't force things to stay in there. You know, mm-hmm. Though there is potentially some weird ones where when you're John and you can still do some psych. Yeah, have you done any? I haven't done any. I yet. haven't done any because I pretty much... What you know, once I started the epilogue, just kind of on uh, main pathed it. Except there's one stranger thing where I just happened to be there. So I guess why not? But yeah. overall, um, no, I haven't tried doing any of this. But the ones that are still there, I don't think are the made the biggest deal out of it. But it's still kind of weird depending on what they do with the dialogue. Yeah, did you ever run into like the veteran? guy who you go fishing with yes yeah like that <laughs> I, I hadn't done the hunting one and that one's like he, he well i've done you. the fishing one i met oh, okay. him in the beginning i haven't gone there his thing's still available okay like, yeah you need well, to do with i went John. fishing with him and after the fishing things he's like oh come back and we'll go hunting sometime hmm. and the hunting one is still there with jo- with um john so i don't know if john's just like hey i was a friend of arthur like i, I, don't, I don't know exactly how it works I, well actually i just thought of a way they could I could see them doing it at least with one of these stranger things. It's like, um, because John has Arthur's journal and is writing it. He could be like, he could be like, oh, I think I'm going to write you my belt, you and my friend's journal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hadn't thought about that. that I'm sure that's, I'm sure on at least one of these, that's probably, you know. How if I had thought about it, I would have just gone and done some quests as John just to be able to talk about it. But. Yeah. Oh, well. I mean, I guess if we wanted to, we could just check it together after. <laughs> yeah, I at least know that from what other people have said, there are certain quest lines that are different if you go there as John because, like, the time has passed. Like, there was one I told you about that, I mean, I guess I won't spoil necessarily, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we talked about it, and I did the, um, I did the, I did it as, did the quest line as Arthur. Yeah. And yeah, we'll spoil it, but um, it makes sense that what you told me happens after the time skip happens. Yeah. It's just like the characters are actually in a different place. And I'm, I'm sure that's not the only one that's like that, Mm-mm. which is also kind of wild that they had to design a lot of these quests in a way to where pretty much at any point during the quest line, it could suddenly be John and like seven years later. Yeah. And the quest had to make sense going forward. That's a lot of work <laughs> to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll say the quest I did. It was a continuation. Kind I mean, we of. can spoil. So we can yeah, spoil yeah, yeah. things. We can. We're yeah. talking about the game. Um, so. Did you and Valentine? I think did you meet the two brothers that are trying to pick up a girl? Mm. Um, the when I did the first one with Arthur, you were shooting bottles off their heads or whatever. Right. I went back with John and oh, okay. um. They yeah, like they didn't. I mean, it was just they were just still doing the same thing years later with the same girl, <laughs> and you punched them. <laughs> okay, I did the punch thing with Arthur. Did did they say something like, "Oh, it's you"? Yeah, they recognized me from the, the yeah. shooting thing. They were like, "Oh, hey, Mister. Yeah, yeah. Hey, again. You know, yeah, yeah, they obviously acted like they knew me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that yeah. that conversation obviously had to be different. The quest yeah. is the same. Though they didn't really. Tra- John didn't have two me lines, so I don't think they had to change that much for that one, since it's just them being idiots. Mm. for like two minutes <laughs> yeah but I, I wonder if like the journal entry is different for jack and john. i mean Arthur, I, I imagine it would because they have different handwriting yeah. they have different they're different characters they speak differently they do a lot of different things and i wouldn't put it past this game <laughs> to have a lot of things like that yeah i didn't check the journal i don't know if i checked the journal for that though it might be have that- you read the journal post yeah yeah, 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 yeah okay yeah. yeah um but i'm trying to remember they might have um the uh, they might have filled it in when Arthur. <laughs> nice. Uh, 
John might, might have filled it in when Arthur wrote it in, you know, wow. like as a little update thing. Wow. It would be cool, but I don't feel like going way back in the journal trying to find that. Mm. Yeah. Especially for something do, so small. I do legitimately think that you're missing a piece of the game if you don't read the journal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Though, like, it's a it's a very big part of it. No, I read it all the way through. I might have not read, like, the very end of John's thing. but I think I haven't either. I need to go back because I beat the game, like, really late, and I was like, all right, I'm going to bed. Same. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, let's talk about some of the other big things. We have to talk about some of the deaths. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. We, it's, it's no, I... I, I, I I like how generally the deaths that happened are just out of nowhere. Because it made me think it's the... I don't know why this popped in my head soon after. It's like, it's the opposite of The Walking Dead, mm. the show, where... Um, not the comics, which do it a lot better, but The Walking Dead, for a lot of the big character deaths, they have episodes that are dedicated to them. It's like, oh no, you're just raising a bunch of death flags. You're like, oh, so they're just going to die. Thanks. There's like they put spotlight on them. A giant build up with like flashing lights. Like, hey, this they're going to die. They're, you know, they're, you know, doing stuff. But no, I like to how pretty much every, I mean, they're probably exceptions, but is it, Arthur, I guess, is an exception because that kind of had build up, yeah. obviously. But um, I like how every death was just kind of sudden. Like you didn't like, like like when Lenny died, I, I that, thought I failed the mission. Like dang, it, I didn't say. I'm like because the guards like, oh wait. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I think Lenny was the most impactful death because you. I mean like Hosea. I I knew I I I was almost certain Jose was gonna die eventually because like he was just way too much of a, the glue of the of the camp. He was kind of like yeah. The, plus again, you played Red Dead, so you know he's not in it. I did. Yeah. <laughs> but and also even without that, like he was the one that kept Dutch in check. It was kind of like yeah. they were like the mom and dad basically of mm-hmm. the group or whatever, and. They were fight. They fought a lot, but Jose kind of was like, "All right, he he like tempered Dutch's insanity," mm-hmm. and I I kind of figured that that was gonna go at some point. And then when you're going to this bank job, I think and the, you're getting to the point where you know that uh, this is sounding drastic, and it's like this is probably gonna go wrong. So Jose, like as soon as that mission was starting to go, it's like okay, I can kind of I, I felt Jose's death coming on, and it was like yeah, it was. I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't impactful. I loved Jose. Yeah, Jose was one of my favorite characters, and that was brutal. But because of how brutal that was, and like it ha- had this whole cutscene where this happens, and it's like oh no, this gang's falling apart. Jose is gone. Oh no, and you're having to run away from the cops, and you're thinking about Jose the whole time. And you're not expecting, you're not in a cutscene, you're in gameplay, and it's like, boom, Lenny hits the ground. I'm like, wait, what? I was, yeah, I was waiting for it to flash and say you failed, and it didn't. I'm like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> I, I think what also happened, I can't remember, I think it, correct me if I'm wrong, I think like right after it happened, um, it did the whole um, dead eye thing where you shoot them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. So I thought that was okay, game over. I say, and it's like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> no, Lenny. <laughs> that was just so unexpected because, and they did it in a brilliant way because yeah. they, they like showed that you don't, it doesn't have to be a cutscene for characters to die. And yeah. Jose had just died. You're not expecting this. And then, boom. And Lenny is one of those that, like, I mean, we'll probably circle back to it. That drunk, the drunk, uh, the drunk mission is just like the best thing ever. <laughs> but because of that, you really cared about Lenny. Like yeah. Lenny did not deserve this. It was brutal. Nope, he was the young and <sighs> just rough. And then John got arrested. <laughs> yeah, and John getting arrested. Oh uh, yeah, I guess it makes sense that you wouldn't think otherwise. But um, let me see if you really picking this up. It, it, it was trying to make it sound like with the whole. During that bank scene, that you know Abigail, um, you know, kind of disappearing and not getting caught in the whole thing, and right. kind of with John being arrested, right? But you know, he ended up being arrested. It made it sound like John and Abigail were the ones who betrayed you, uh, right? Because that's what they seem to me. Well, it's like, did they? <laughs> no, I definitely, especially when they, they kept saying like, "Oh, we don't know what happened to Abigail, but she she just disappeared." It yeah. definitely it seems and like then John getting arrested and like. It seems like she snitched, and that's why she's not getting in trouble. That's why she's not, like... I was know, thinking, yeah, maybe it was Abigail or Abigail and John, and, right. yeah, John got caught. <laughs> right. But, obviously, Micah did it. Son of a bitch. Freaking asshole. <laughs> Freaking Micah. Can we just talk about it? I mean, like, that guy's actor did such a good job. Because oh, yeah. you hated that. You hate him right Freaking away. Freaking snake. Like, <laughs> I mean, you kind of, you know, you talk about him. I mean, you kind of talk to him and kind of see him for a thing, but you don't really 
at least in my play for you, didn't really have extended time until you broke him out of jail. Right. And then you just went on a killing spree. For no good reason. Nope. And, like, you're the one, you broke him out of here, and then he's making it hard for you yep. like, after you did this. No, before then, it's just kind of like, you know you're supposed to not like him because Arthur hates him. Yeah. But then it was, like, <laughs> starting kind of there. an asshole, but then it's like, it's like, oh, he just... No. Like, he's just awful. And yeah. he's just one of the few characters that's not really gray. He's just unequivocally, like, a snake and a yep. horrible person, which was kind of... It was kind of nice to have one of those. Oh, no, no. It's not a bad thing. You know, <laughs> yeah, you just, no, no, no. You're supposed to hate the character. <laughs> you are. You are definitely supposed to hate him, and it makes sense. And, uh, yeah. By the way, the last game th- gameplay thing, you do just going bam, dead bam, eye bam, and bam, shooting bam. him over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at first I thought it was just going to be like, Dutch killed him, and like, that was it. And it's like, I don't get the satisfaction. And they're like, nope, just unload. Just go yeah. for it. Just, just go for it. Um, go or, ham. Let's talk about some of the other... Well, I mean, like... We talked about Jose and Lenny, but, like, I think the the big, like, turning point or just, like, the first big turning point in this game was... Sean? Yeah. You have you have this mission where, like, you're starting to like Sean. And it's, like, he's yep. just this, like, kind of, like, funny, outlandish Irish dude. But like He's kind of an asshole, but he's a fun asshole. And I feel like Arthur's voice actor does like, such a good job of, like... You think that he doesn't like these people sometimes, but then you have to start. You start to realize that, that no, this is just kind of the way that they talk and the mm-hmm. way they communicate. And honestly, this band of rough outlaws—they're not going to be affectionate towards each other out loud. They're going to be like insulting, like pirates, like yeah. yelling at each no, other. No, or something. no, for Arthur, like unless I'm forgetting something, the only one he flat out did not like was Micah. <laughs> right, and <laughs> and you could tell. You could tell there's a difference. Like he insulted yeah. everyone, but you could tell that it wasn't joking. It wasn't yeah. like fun joking with friends when he was talking about Micah. You could tell yeah. there was a difference. And in the journal is where you kind of got like Arthur's like where he the thoughts that he didn't know how to express out loud mm-hmm. in person. And he talked about like, yeah, I think I I like Sean. Like he yeah. like I, I like I really cared about him. and when, like he was a loud little brother or something. Right. And when he dies you see like in that journal and and that's like I really think it's interesting that in every step of the way when a character dies that's kind of when you really see what the other people truly thought about them. Mm-hmm. Like they'll like say, "Oh, I hate this guy." Like, uh, like you're lucky that we even came and saved you. We were like, "I wanted to leave you, but he 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 yeah. made us do it." And then they die, and then you realize, like, no, that that's all just he's just saying that, mm-hmm. but they really care. And you even yeah. see that with Uncle with um Jack. Like he's later in the epilogue. I'm just jumping around, but like yeah. Jack is like insulting him the whole time. Like. Ah, you shouldn't even be here or whatever. And then he gets taken by those people. And Jack's like, no, we have to get him. We have to go now. We have to go get him now. Like, he I actually cares. Yeah. And Oh, you said Jack. You mean John? I meant John, yeah. yeah. I meant John. <laughs> Sorry. Jack, John. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, and Sean was the first one. Like, I really started to like Sean. And then just cut scene, bam. Just right away. No warning. <laughs> the most, like, sudden thing in the world. And I feel like that was the first big turning point. There was obviously a lot more after that. But after so that. That's the point just... where, again, because I do not know what characters were going to be in one or not. So yeah. far as I know, everyone could have been in there. But right. Um, but I, that happened suddenly. I was like, oh, did I just see that wrong? And he was just kind of selling this up. Oh, no. Nope, he, oh. He's dead. Oh, so this is what we're doing. Anyone he can die at any hell. moment. It was exciting for me because, like, again, I, other than... Dutch and the Martians, I did not know who would live or die. That's why I feel like it's almost maybe even a better thing to play it the way you're playing it. I mean, like, I wasn't immediately assuming that just because there was a character that wasn't in Red Dead 1 doesn't mean they're necessarily dead. Yeah. You know, like, even with Sean and stuff, I was like, some of these guys might just get away. Yeah. You know, but, like, I knew Sean wasn't in Red Dead 1, but I wasn't like, oh, he's dead. You know, I yeah. there, was, there was still, like, an element of just not knowing. Um... But yeah, that was the big one, and even Kieran got me hard. Too. Yeah, because did you do the fishing mission with him? I don't think so. Okay, a lot of people didn't. A lot of people missed that. It, it was just literally like he's in the camp, and you can walk up to yeah, him. And it's yeah, like yeah. go fishing. I saw camp come up. I didn't, didn't drew it. Yeah, a lot of people didn't. I mean, fishing isn't the most fun yeah. thing in the world, so I understand why you wouldn't want to do it. But like, I, I mean, actually, I did it accidentally like i went up to him and accidentally pressed square and i was like damn it no, I, I'm, okay i didn't want to go fishing with you i wanted to go do something else but it's like because of that fishing mission i really did feel like i kind of knew kieran mm-hmm. and like he's just this kind of like bumbling awkward dude and he's trying so hard to he's, you keep saying like all right i'll go fishing with you damn a driscoll and he's like i'm not in the driscoll <laughs> <laughs> he's just like he's a nice dude and when he walked up 
but just the brutal way he died. And yeah. again, like you see everyone like dogging Kieran the whole time. He was tied up to a tree forever. He did all this other stuff. But when he died, there was a visceral reaction to the the whole camp. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when I was coming up slowly, I was like, wait, is that someone, is that someone <laughs> dead? Then I thought, I was like, who haven't I seen in camp? And then, I, <laughs> and then I heard someone yell Kieran. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah I could have thought, okay, who haven't seen in camp? And then they care, like, oh, no. <laughs> and I don't know if you know, like, I don't know if you saw, but a little bit before then, people had said, like, has anyone seen Kieran since the party? And they're like, no, we haven't seen, I don't know if you guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, were yeah, in the camp. Like, yeah. you had that big party where everyone got drunk. And it was like, I went to camp another time after that. And they're like, yeah, we haven't seen Kieran. I don't know where the hell he is. Mm. And then it was a few missions later that happened. Yeah, I, I do remember that now. Did hear that? <laughs> it's rough. It's rough. So rough. And then, all right. Do you do you want to start just getting veering towards the end slash epilogue? Sure. And then we'll bail out. There's so much to talk about. I could probably talk about this for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In no particular order. Um. I mean. All right. So what what did you think about? I mean, really, just that whole last act, like chapter five and six. I mean, mm-hmm. I kind of like they both blend together to me. Um. Yeah. But whenever you're starting to get to the point where it's like going every mission you're going to, Arthur's like, this is a bad idea. Wait, what wait, the hell are we doing? Maybe if we're talking about five and six, we just start going to Guarma. Oh, yeah. God, there's so much in this. <laughs> that whole thing. Yeah. This is going to be a long one, but it's fine. Screw it. Strap in. I'm, I'm excited to talk. Um, so what do you what, what do you think about Guarma? Because like I'm conflicted about it. It was one of those things that once I finished Guarma, I was like, "What the hell just happened?" <laughs> it's like, "What did we just do?" Like I just was not expecting we're at this Caribbean island all of a sudden. I kind of like the subversion of it, mm-hmm. but it also like I don't I don't know if there's one part of the game that I felt like was maybe unnecessary. It's maybe that one. Just because I feel like some of the things that was conveyed in there could have been conveyed somewhere else, like Dutch yeah. killing the old lady that was a very big character moment for a dutch and that would like kind of color the rest of the game but i feel like that could have happened somewhere else true i think it was partly a thing of yeah they wanted to mix it up some and do a lot yeah um do that kind of thing yeah show dutch isn't their way maybe separate um the group and just have it like a smaller more knit you know tight group of like the five or so that were there yeah yeah something like that yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it was it was one. I, uh, I definitely and, enjoyed uh, it. But. Another reason, um, to have development for Sadie, maybe get get all yeah, the names out of the way so Sadie could grow. That is true, and because she was already like, I want to be involved in this, and they would never let her, and that was like she had to do that. She and had another to do reason, that, potentially, died, so but. John's kind of away for a while, you know, like kind of just for that. And then, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. It was just like the whole Gorma thing. Like as I was going through this, like. That felt like the most half baked storyline in the game just when I was with these the Gorma natives and mm-hmm. stuff. I just felt like the writing and even some of the animations in there was just a little more lacking than the rest of the game. It just felt like that was like and then you're so, suddenly like fighting the Cuban army and all this stuff. Like it, it just like went a bunch of different places that like I don't know if it needed to go on that long. But it was still cool. It was cool mm-hmm. to see it. Didn't expect to be seeing like a Caribbean environment when I went to play Red Dead Redemption yeah. Two, <laughs> so that was that was kind of cool. Yeah. That was kind of cool, and yeah, coming back that was neat to see Sadie taking that leadership role. And then when Bill walks in, and he's like, "I was asking around everywhere," and as soon as he said that, I was like, "Uh oh, uh oh," <laughs> he was asking around everywhere. And then yeah, the mil- the Pinkertons come well, up. Well, that's because of Micah, though. Yeah, they would should have, okay, yeah. Because it was right after Grandma uh, got yeah, back yeah, to yeah. Micah. That is true. That is true. So that actually wasn't Bill. No, they proved that line and they'd been like, oh, Bill did it. Or Yeah, you're right. I, I, I kind of forgot that they did. That Bill was being incompetent. Yes. Which Bill is incompetent a lot of times. He is, but. but. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lovable incompetent. Yeah, but they didn't get annoying though. It's like, you traitors, you're not following Dutch blindly. Yes. And I do like it. Yeah, the, the, the camp got very split like that. Yeah. There were some of them. The. Yeah, I guess we can yeah, just kind of did talk about random things from mm-hmm. um, chapter 5 and 6. Hey, when when it got to the whole camp split, I liked how, for the most part, it was split between, uh, you know, for the most part, people I really liked and then people like I hated slash micro and then people I didn't care about as much. Right. Except for, it's like, Javier, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you on this side? <laughs> that was one of the ones I'm like, huh. 
Yeah, it's like, especially, and I'm glad that they had one that you actually had spent, spent time with, so yeah. it's like added a little bit more stakes That's to it. That makes sense, because yeah, Javier was kind of more about loyalty, but it's still kind of like, you think Javier would be, you know, yeah. think about this some more. Also, I always liked him, but towards the end, Charles become, became one of my favorites. Okay. Between that I, and the epilogue. Oh, I thought you were about to say, like, towards the end, I, I didn't like Charles. Or something. I was oh, going to be no. like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, Charles was always great. But, yeah, the final, I mean, the final, like, chapter six and the epilogue. And the epilogue featured him heavy. Like, it, took, heavy. It, quick, it quickly became the thing where, other than, like, Dutch and John and that kind of stuff, Charles became, like, the guess, crew member he spent the most time with. I mean, he was, like, Arthur's central confidant. Yeah. For a lot of the end of the game, when you went with the whole, and we haven't even talked about Rain's fall, or the Indians at all. Yeah. But and he was a big part of that, and just whenever like, and like when Charles came, he's just like Dutch is obviously using Eagle Flies. I have yeah. them right, right? Yeah, Rain's fall is the older one. Eagle Flies is the um, younger one. Is the son? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Yes, I have that yes, right. yes. And like, I mean, I felt that when he's like, Dutch is just using this guy. They're not going to win this fight, and he's just like, I don't. We don't know what he's doing because Dutch won't tell us what he's doing. We don't even know if Dutch knows what he's doing. He's just kind of chaotic at this point, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Please go help Rains fall." And I was like, "Okay, Charles." <laughs> like, yeah, that's one of those interesting things where, like, I wonder what because you get a choice if, um, should we pause? Both of our moms are calling us for some reason. I think that my mom usually always calls me at this time. There we go. Anyway, <laughs> um. If there's something important, she'll text. Oh, yeah. Um, but, what else? Say? Oh, yeah, there was a thing when, you know, yeah, you were going to talk to Rain's fall that you had a choice for Charles. Like, yeah. Yes, and I was like, obviously, we both picked yes, because why wouldn't we? Yes. But it also made me think, why doesn't we pick no? Yeah, I really don't know. Like, would it be one of those um, dumb, like, JRPG thing, I guess, something that might happen, where it'd be like, <laughs> are you sure? Like, can you? And then the prom comes up again, and you have to say yes. I feel like this I, wouldn't I feel happen like in it this wouldn't. game, but yeah. that would like it makes you also think what would happen then? Because I mean, it's not like it ended great with even yeah. with us helping him. We obviously got like a very strong relationship with the Rain's Fall, but yeah, would that just not have happened? Would, like, I feel like what would happen because it went to a whole different thing. There was like quests with the army guy. Um, I forget his name, Captain Monroe or whatever. Yeah, that all led from going to help Rain's Fall. I, honestly, thinking about it, and the, maybe something I'm forgetting. I feel like if you took that stuff out, obviously the 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 dialogue would be different, like in your kind of relationship and your feelings towards like Rain's Fall and stuff. Because by the you know the t- end of all that, Rain's Fall trusts you. Right. Um, but it may not necessarily be necessary. Yeah, the outcome would have still been the same because Eagle Flies was going to attack the government. Eagle Flies would still get captured. You would f- still probably go and save yeah. him. Yeah, there's certain things like whenever you get back to. You get back to camp and Rain's fall is there, like pleading with you. Oh, yeah. This is like when they go to attack. He's pleading yeah. with you to go, like help him. I mean, but I guess maybe you still would have been there. Maybe you just maybe you would have been more in line because you know during that whole quest, it's kind of like two different factions. That's when you're really starting to actually split, and you're going behind Dutch's back with Charles to help Rain's fall. Maybe during that whole time, you're with Dutch instead yeah and you're like helping on that side of things or just I'm be very sure, interesting but. though i have no intention of doing of <laughs> no playing this game these are times. the type of things that i'll just look up yeah to see like some differences and everything and i still want to look up what happens at the end if you choose to go for the money oh uh, yeah yeah which that'll I'm, be an easy one to look up yeah i've heard people i've heard what happens but i haven't actually seen the thing I can imagine most people that picked that did it because they just wanted to see what would happen uh, yeah. going through a second time. <laughs> yeah. M- most people. I mean, I really, I have to imagine that um, White Hat is like the most proper way to play the game. Just Yeah. And I, I kind of like talked to you earlier, like off podcast, that like I kind of wish that this game had just done away with the morality meter. Yeah. I feel like it's a little... It's a little archaic and a little disingenuous to the rest of the game because at some point you're just doing things to like bump. You, you know, you pay too much attention to that meter because there you're going to pay attention to it. I kind of wish that yeah, your and- actions were just your actions and they like they affected the world and you saw that by Arthur's character, how he interacted with other people, his relationships, instead of just like a meter that goes up and down. Yeah, especially since some of the things that made it go down are kind of arbitrary, like. 
You know, there are times where you accidentally shot an enemy's horse. Like, yeah. uh, that makes a good down. Or you pit, or you take, or pickpocket or take stuff from a dead person. I hate that because, like, what's the dead person doing with the thing? Like, even if I'm a good person, the dead guy's not doing yeah, anything with it, his belongings. Like, I'm, and <laughs> while there is some, that's not a bad of, thing. Or even though why there's it, there is some sense of who you can take stuff and and who you can't. Sometimes it just feels kind of random about what you know docks you and what doesn't. Yeah, it's one of those like the game like labels this as that, but sometimes they just I don't know. Like it's weird. It's it's uh, yeah, it's messy. I mean, there's a lot of like weird little messy things there that never affect the game that much because you can get that morality meter back up and pretty yeah. easy <laughs> i always like i said the joke a lot of times like especially early on in the game it's like yeah i murder a lot of people and steal from everyone but i pet every dog i see and say hey to people on the road so i'm basically the most morally yeah. um, sound cowboy <laughs> in, yep. in the world <laughs> uh okay well do we have any more main stuff or we have to talk about the epilogue at some point oh very quick, we hadn't talked about Rain's Fall that much, but one of my favorite moments also was that towards the end of this game in just some random quest with Rain's Fall when you're walking around in just like this little optional thing, Arthur drops yep. the bomb that he had a wife and a kid. Well, he had a wife, or, but he or, had a... Or the, yeah, he had, he had a, a kid. Yeah, they, they, they <laughs> obviously were Yeah, they weren't married. But he, he at least... He had a kid before. He had this whole other life before that ended tragically. No, no, no. Yeah, I did that too. It was like... I think Arthur's son even registered to me. It's like, oh, okay, let's talk about that. And then he just like, wait, what? <laughs> That's just out of nowhere. He mentions it again with the nun during the. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But even that, but even that's optional. Even that's yeah, missable. Even, so yeah, you you go this whole game you without knowing, right? And that's a very big thing. And I also love when that was introduced. I'm glad that wasn't introduced earlier. And I love that being introduced with Rain's Fall because it's like. Arthur gets to the point where he's he he like starts to trust this guy, and he even said like in his journal, "I used to would have I, I previously would have weak. weak and pathetic, but now I think that he's like like strong and wise. Forget, wise and strong or whatever." Um, and that he he confided in him, and he was also like, "I'm dying. Yeah. What does it hurt?" And like Arthur gets to that point with a lot of things where he's just like, "I don't have anything to lose anymore." I'm you know, I'm I'm going to open up about these things, and that wrecked me. That did. I was, it, first, I was kind of like you. I had to be like, wait, what? Wait, <laughs> did I hear that right? That... You got that now? <laughs> <laughs> and it makes sense. This guy's an older guy. He's had a whole life. Yeah, I mean, he's had a whole life before this game. Actually, I mean, I could see that being the first chance that maybe it come up. I can see it potentially when you talk. Will you do an optional thing with one of your crewmates? It comes up or something. Maybe, like. I don't know. I'm just, you know, just throwing out hypotheticals. Like maybe something random happens with John. He brings up his son or whatever. Like, especially with Jack and stuff. Yeah. And towards the end of that game, John definitely becomes the person that like Arthur's kind of living vicariously through. Or he's just like, if I'm gonna die and I've been a horrible person, but I can help John be the man that I wanted to be and help his family and stuff, then all this would have been worth it. Right. And he gets that. Yep. He gets that, but also what I was like, where I the only thing that I'll like talk about from Red Dead Redemption One is the thing that makes this really strong and everything is Arthur does get that, and John fights like hell to get this life that he wanted with Abigail and Jack and the ranch and everything like that, and it is beautiful and it's great for the for this moment, and that doesn't take away from it. But what makes it really powerful to me and very tragic and sad is we know what happens to john we know yeah. we know that he does not survive this whole ordeal sure. and i mean like you could probably assume this just from the type of game it is he obviously gets roped back into a lot of these violent things that you know it's like the perpetual cycle it it's always going to catch up to you when you're in this life and it's just like you can't escape it but john at least gets those fleeting moments. He gets that like those moments of happiness and moments of like peace that Arthur wanted so bad. And mm -hmm. he gets to like, and that's why I think that a lot of people have said they feel like the main story and the epilogue are like separated. I feel like they're very much part of the same story. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like that's John is kind of Arthur's legacy. Yeah. Basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Arthur's like passing the baton when he gave right. him his bag. Right. 
Yeah, and that was that was all. He puts the hat on him. Yeah, like goes and says, "I'm so happy that it for story. You know, it just did it story wise. When you went up to the mountain to take on Micah, you had Arthur's hat on. Yeah, that was uh, just- I always wore that hat. That hat just became iconic to me. Even when I I changed the outfit all the times, I just kept that same hat because it yeah. just started to feel like that was mm-hmm. like my hat. And I really wish that, even though it probably would have made it a little too obvious, but I wish that that hat was the hat that John. John was wearing in Red Dead Redemption 1, but it's not. He, he wears a different hat, but I just feel like, you know, I wish that he was wearing the hat Arthur gave him yeah, for yeah. the rest of the time, but no. Oh well. But it's again, that might have been a little obvious if it just walks up. He's like, wait a minute, Arthur's wearing <laughs> yeah. J- John's hat, because we would have seen it as John's hat. Mm-hmm. From, you know, yeah. Yep. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> again, this is very long. We have to talk about the epilogue. Lots of different things. Uh, did you like... I mean, I, I kind of liked seeing John in his normal life, like just yeah. kind of doing the mundane things on the farm. I thought that was interesting. Yep. Uh, shoveling uh, manure. Of course. <laughs> Making the cows. The, the best gameplay we've ever seen. Well, ever. At some point at Evo next year, we'll have uh, Red Dead Redemption <laughs> cow uh, manure. <laughs> Speed Shoveling. Yep. yep. Shove- <laughs> uh, if you, like, Sami, if you have anything else you want to talk about before this happens, but the house building montage. Yeah, because <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> that music that played, it was yeah. just perfect. You just said they like I can't believe that this is happening in this game, and I love it. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing with Charles and Charles and Bill. You just yeah. love these guys. Not uncle, the it. or yeah, um, uh, uncle. Yeah, damn, they're all just <laughs> they're all like going all through my people. mind. All these people. Yeah, I mean, there's not too much to say about it. It's just that scene was great. Yeah, <laughs> that scene was great. I like the Sadie missions. Yes. Sadie was, Adler. Yeah, what did you think about Sadie Adler as a character? Loved her. <laughs> yeah, I thought she was great. I worried that, like, at first, I, I'll be honest, I, I didn't, like, I thought that she was going to be one of those characters that everyone else liked a little more than me at first because, like, she was, in the first few missions, when she was actually, like, kind of, like, she was suiting up and, like, wanting to be a part of the gang and everything, she was... Reminding me a little too much of like a GTA Five character that's just kind of like a wild parody, like not this severe, but like a Trevor type character yeah, who's yeah, just yeah. like I just like killing, I just like yeah, being yeah. bloodthirsty and killing everything. And it just she seemed a little too one note compared to everyone else mm-hmm. at first. Yeah, but I feel you. as it went on, it very it became very clear. It's like okay, no, I pegged her wrong. Like mm-hmm. she, there's a lot more to her, and she's not. I mean, especially it's a simple thing, but like. In the epilogue, when you're going on these missions with her, but Abigail is uh, is like pushing against you going for it, and she even says like, "John, I don't. Every time I hear a gunshot, I'm gonna be worrying about you and your wife and your family yeah. and everything, and I don't want to have that on my conscience." And it's like that that's a small line, but it actually says a lot about Sadie. Like, mm-hmm. she is a part of this life, and she is a very rough like outlaw person, but she also cares about. She's like, "You're my friend, and this is the life you need." Like, yep. I don't want to be the one that's... I'm a widow. I don't want my friend to be a widow. <laughs> right, right. Like, she's actually a very deep character. And yeah. I, I think that was part of the arc, is that she mm-hmm. was supposed to build to get to there. So, Indeed. I ended up loving her. I love the final team of John Sadie Charles. <laughs> yes. And, yeah, and that was... I mean, like, it didn't seem like anyone was getting... It was, like, brutal. You walk in there, immediately Charles gets shot. Like, Sadie no. is there. It's like, oh, God, everything's falling apart. <laughs> But they survive. They did survive. For yeah. now. Mm. <laughs> it was just brutal, though. That, yeah. whole, that whole, like, walk up the, the um, mountain. Indeed. And I guess let's talk about that final scene, and then we can, like, maybe just comb back over and see if we missed anything we want to okay. talk about. But uh, this final scene, it was, a, it was a little, like, strange. To, like, I felt like the whole thing was just, it was a little, I don't know, it was a little weird the way it happened, and I couldn't quite read what dutch like what do you read dutch shooting micah like how how do you read that because i feel like it's a complicated thing for me. um yeah for again since you play red Dead, you probably have more context of where dutch ends up but i do but i, I feel like like but as far as i, mean, I, I won't spoil anything but that yeah, story yeah. is like far enough away in years or whatever that i i, I don't i don't feel like i have like 
I don't have information that directly colors this because the Red Dead okay, One is way I kind of took it, future, and but. let me know if there's something words that might you know contradict or you feel differently. But I feel like when he walks out, you can immediately tell he f- he's a broken man. Yeah, he does not feel good about where he has gone, and I feel like when he saw um because it seemed like at the end of the you know chapter six when he kind of sees the whole thing with arthur and micah that he's kind of hesitant and feels some guilt right feels bad about the whole how the whole things went up but he didn't really do much of anything about it so and then micah was obviously able to kind of like worm his way back into Duchess. Yeah. but he did make it loyalty. micah did make it sound like it was just a recent thing they just got together recently to right just, to take i guess the money from blackwater is what you would assume that whole thing was about yeah, yeah. But, but made it seem like he was broken. He kind of maybe felt guilt about the whole, how everything went down. Like, mm-hmm. kind of realized these were right. And then he saw in front of him the person who ma- helped make everything bad. And John, yeah. who was pretty much a son to him. And Sadie, who was also, like, family and about to get killed. So he was kind of like, screw it. Just, and just shot yeah, my Yeah, and this person. I mean, like, because, I mean, to us, obviously, it's very stark who's right and who's wrong yeah. <laughs> in this scenario. Yeah, so it's kind of like in a kind of, kind of like Arthur in a kind of a redemption. I mean, I mean not not nearly like that, but right. kind of a redemption. Felt like in his way, some way he can, you know, get over his guilt maybe do, a little bit. Do some good yeah. at the end of this line of, like, you know. Yeah, because, again, it feels like in Chapter 6 he did especially once it comes up Micah is the the traitor that Dutch felt bad about the whole, you know whole thing that he let it get there and you know yeah it's like I'm not gonna I in his mind he say like I'm not gonna watch another one of my son get killed by this guy right that's uh, Micah was only there what six months before this whole thing <laughs> before, oh you mean like with him yeah yeah with the gang when the, everything went down basically yeah I was trying to he was, ba- like, he's, I felt like he was basically just there for the collapse of the gang. And like, <laughs> yeah, I felt like there were mo- like a multiple characters that I, heard, I think I really heard them say to multiple characters, "Oh, you're living here for like six months or something." Right. Like, man, how m- you got a small party until six months ago, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's also kind of like I always thought it was funny. It's just like there's the Vanderlyn gang or like rivals with the O'Driscolls, but apparently there's like. About 250 O'Driscolls, and yeah. there's like 25 Vanderlyn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and really, yeah, again, that's, that's unfortunately just one of those it's game, video game v- things, video yeah. game things, which you could argue maybe, you know, Rockstar could have done better and just made a more interesting gunplay system. Yeah, it was just with their gunplay, like, it kind of had to be just like a bunch of, uh, just a, a bunch of gallery. guys to shoot <laughs> yeah. at or something, and like, maybe they should have gotten to some more clever story beat for why there's so many people and like you know it, it doesn't yeah. completely make sense that there's that many O'Driscolls. seems like the Vanderlyn gang should have been shot out a long time ago if that was the yeah, case yeah the O'Driscolls. <laughs> it's probably some other one O'Driscolls is one of those main ones like yeah they probably shouldn't have had this many people probably not like when you shoot a bunch of cops after he's like okay this makes more sense but yeah it probably should have been one of those things where just the actual con- like confronting the O'Driscolls was a little bit more rare than it is. Yeah. Especially since you been. can run into a group of them randomly. Right. And that's also what makes it worse. And, you know, yeah. you see all that. But it was still, there's the Colmer O'Driscoll like hanging thing was also yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> there's so much in this game. There's so much that we're going to have like completely forgotten to talk about. Because again, I mean, think about being back on that mountain at the beginning of the game. That feels like ages ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> wild. I mean, saving Jack, um, John from like the wolves or whatever mm-hmm. in the top of that—that's crazy. Indeed, it's Indeed. crazy, and just how like Arthur kind of goes from like resenting John through a lot of the game to, mm-hmm. you know, caring about him at the end. Indeed, and I, I, like I'm gonna keep just going one more. We need to get out. We need to stop. Um, I also have to pee, but uh, I'm I'm happy that Mary Linton didn't end up like happy because I don't feel like it would have made I, I like the way that it ended I'm kind of yeah. like you expect there to be another quest where you're going to go and like you know patch things up and do good or whatever but it's like with Arthur's lifestyle that's not going to work mm. and, it's, and it makes sense that they just like, they actually care about each other and she even says like I'm sorry that I even brought this back up I'm, I know it's going to make it harder for you and everything like reading that letter was rough yeah. it was brutal and I'm 
kind of happy that that's just where it was until obviously the end credits with her like visiting his grave. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing you got that too, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just just making sure. Don't know all the end credit stuff. I mean, I didn't know like maybe if you didn't, fi- you did finish the Maryland stuff, right? Like you got to the note. yeah, I got the letter yeah, put yeah, on the yeah, train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Good all that. Yeah. Um, trying, now I was trying to think about the whole Arthur's grave thing. I know Charles says he buried. It. I wonder if he said where it was so you can go visit it. You can. Time. Apparently, every sing, every single member of the gang, I'm pretty sure that died, has a grave somewhere. Okay. I've heard that you can go visit them. Well, I can look him up online. Okay. Also, apparently, you can go back to the mountain where you had where you killed Micah, and you can get his guns, the two guns that he had. Nice. You can you can get his body's like frozen in the ground. You can go get the two guns. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently they're pretty sweet. I was thinking, but I wonder if there's anything where I w- um at the mountain that Arthur died. Yeah, I, I mean, like I know his grave is there somewhere. Like I, I haven't actually seen someone found find it, but like it was in the end credits, and it kind of shows you where it is. But and Charles I, said he buried him somewhere. Hmm. I also had a thought that I thought you were going to be able to follow up on. You know how um, well, it's a choice at the end where you know Arthur can either go with John or go get the money. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you can go back in that cave and get the money. Oh uh, yeah. I know Arthur has the key, but I mean, you could just break the lock or something. <laughs> That'd be something to look at. Look at. I'm sure. I, I have it directly. I, seen I feel it, like, you know? and they they even said where in the cave it is. So I don't see, and John should have known about it too. So I have no reason, you know. So you can I save see- John and get your money too. Well, or John, you, you are John. <laughs> I don't see any reason why he couldn't go get the money. <laughs> no, unless they just want to say like someone else got it, just so that you know you yeah. have to do one or the other. But I mean, like um, I know what happens if you do. I mean, like I guess I won't say. I mean, it's it's a very similar a very similar outcome, just the way more sad and visceral way that it happens if you do yeah. go get the money. Um, but yeah, we need to talk about one character. I probably got them speaking. Miss Grimshaw, man. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I mean, know she was going to die there. I didn't know she was shot, but I was wondering, like, because she was just kind of on the ground like, for a little bit. She like, was one of those. I knew that she wasn't in Red Dead 1, but I also thought that she's a character that could have just gotten away, too. Yeah. I mean, there was, a, there was a lot of those. Or could have died of, or survived that and died of old age. That's also true, because she's, like, by far the oldest, probably, yeah. there. Yeah. Like, her character was very, like, I enjoyed her character a lot, because it was very conflicting. She was super, super harsh the entire game, and very, like, Treated all those girls very poorly, but then you would get in conversations with her where she's like, "Oh, of course, no, I love them." Like, but uh, she's just like a very I mean, there's one strong with, mother. And then Tilly. Tilly, yeah, yeah, and that was another one. Like, she treats Tilly like crap this whole time. She's very harsh and everything, but then they take Tilly. It's like, oh hell no, like, this is one of ours. We're going. Arthur, come on, we're getting her back. That was another one of those. Like, just okay, let's go, let's go, yeah. and you're feeling it. It's like let's go get them. <laughs> so like, I liked her. She was very interesting. Her killing Molly was very brutal. Yeah. I mean, snitches get stitches, but then she wasn't even a snitch. But yeah. <laughs> didn't end up being a snitch. Yeah. Which yeah. just makes that whole Molly thing shouldn't have said sense. that she was a snitch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't completely blame Miss Grimshaw because she literally said that she did. Yeah. That she did say that. And it was the rules. Yep. Hey, she knew. She knew. She knew the rules, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. Well, there's so much else we could talk about, but I do have to pee. Yeah. We were talking about, like, potential, like, stranger things. <laughs> yeah. Shoot, oh. There's so much to talk about in the main mission. So much. I mean, if you want to keep talking, I can go pee and then cut it out. Uh, yeah. How long have we had, like, an hour, hour 15 of packing? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, this game. <laughs> yeah. This August. game's unreal. Yeah. We can, we can also wait until... One of the other nerds at large people have finished okay. the Red Dead and um, do another discussion about this we can, another time. We can do that. And if we want, Jeff, it's our podcast. At the end of a nerds at large podcast, we can just be like, hey, cut it off right there. We're talking Red Dead. We're Red Dead. We can do whatever we want. Do whatever um, we instead, want. we can go record a Let's Play or something right now. Or get food. Yeah, I do need lunch. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. I hope this sounded a lot better on these fancy new mics. I really enjoy having. I think I got these. too far away sometimes, but I think it was rare. We're gonna have I to get. Myself, we're, gonna yeah. have to, we're gonna have to learn. But yeah, you do have to remember to kind of stay up on the thing. I've been gripping it a while. It gives me something to do, but I hope yeah. it doesn't sound bad. Um, what should we tell them to check out? Game Awards. That they might be watching this way in the past, but 
Hey, Game Awards 2018 is about to happen. We're going to be doing a live reaction to that. And you can watch our betting special. You can watch our betting special that uh, me, Will, and Jacob are all competing with. And that I made up. And Jeff made the game. So, yeah. All right. I think that's about it. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we will talk about Red Dead more. This game Indeed. is special, and it's really good. All right. Yep. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.